Hello, I'm going to show you how to go through the TensorFlow 2 Quick Start in CoCalc, both in a main project, possibly for free using very um, low end resources, and then using a T4 GPU running on Google Cloud. It'll be a spot instance, so it costs about 15 to 20 cents per hour. And then finally, using a state of the art H100 GPU which cost about $5, a little over $5 per hour. All right, so let's get started. Um, here I am on CoCalc. I'm going to click on your projects after I've signed in. And I have a demo project set up and I will make a directory where I'm going to put my um, TensorFlow tutorial. So I'll just call it TensorFlow. You can put a slash after the file name and it creates a folder or you can scroll down and click on new folder. So after doing that, we now have a new folder called TensorFlow. Okay, now I'm going to grab the quick start Jupyter Notebook. Notice there's a couple of links here, and one of them is download notebook. If you don't have network access, you can just click to download the notebook and it'll download it to your computer. You can then go over here and you can drag and drop to copy the notebook that you downloaded onto CoCalc. Simple as that. If you do have network access, instead you can copy the URL, the link address, click plus new, and then just paste the URL right there, and then click create download or hit enter, and then it will make a copy of the notebook. In any case, we have the notebook. And so let's um, get it. The first thing let's do, since it already has all the output in it, to clean things up, let's click on Edit, and then Clear Output, Clear All Output. That's what that says right there. And this will clear all of the output from the notebook. So our Python 3 environment in CoCalc by default has the latest version of TensorFlow pre-installed. As you can see, I'm importing it, and then we can just go through and run all the code. Um, if you want to monitor and just kind of see how much CPU is being used, you can click this little sidebar where it says processes, and that shows each of your processes and the CPU usage. So let's go along and run each of these cells. Okay, so we're setting up the model, defining the loss function, compiling the model, and now we actually start the training. So we should see some CPU usage. And this is going to start running. Um, it ends up taking just under a minute. This is using CPU. There's no GPU yet, so it takes a while. Um, while it runs for the next 30 seconds, let me tell you a little bit about making a compute server with a GPU. So for that, what we'll do is we'll go over here where it says servers, we'll click, and then what we're going to do is be able to make a separate virtual machine that will connect to our project, and we'll be able to put a Jupyter Notebook on that machine and then run it there. So it'll basically just make it so the kernel is remote. Okay, this finished. It took 35 seconds. It did the training, and then let's test it. There it is. And the rest of the things, and we're done. Okay, so we've now stepped through the TensorFlow 2 Quick Start for beginners on CoCalc, totally for free. Um, next, let's do the same thing, but with a GPU. So, as I mentioned before, let's click on Servers. And what we need is to add to our project a separate machine that's running remotely, connects to our project, and provides compute resources. So click Create Compute Server. We're going to use a T4 GPU. And so we'll click on this budget Google Colab template. And then we can go down here. Um, we're actually going to switch the image to be TensorFlow instead of Colab. You could, of course, use Colab since it also has TensorFlow installed. But there's a special um, TensorFlow image that comes from the TensorFlow developer group and is hosted on NVIDIA. It's that Docker image. So you can see that it's the one that um, is right here. So it's on the NVIDIA website. Okay, so that's the image we'll use. 
Uh, we can leave everything else the same, but uh, the so this is a spot instance, and this is one of the cheapest places in the world. Sometimes you want to choose a slightly more expensive location because there's more likely to be one available. So I'm going to change this to Indonesia. And now let's just leave everything else as it is and click Start Server. Okay, that will start the server running. This should take about three to five minutes and it will um, build the server, boot it up, and then we'll have it available to run our Jupyter Notebooks and many other things on. Um, it's possible it will fail to start up and that can happen if there's a lack of spot instances available. Notice this is a, it's a really, really cheap instance. It's only going to cost 22 cents per hour, which is really good for a GPU. Um, oh, it looks like it was able to allocate an instance and now it's booting it up. Incidentally, if you'd like to watch it boot up, you can click the serial button and you'll see the um, console fly by as the virtual machine is booted up. Um, let's just leave that for a second and go back to our notebook. What I'm going to do with the notebook is click File, Duplicate File, and make a new version of it, which is called Beginner-T4, since it will run on our T4 GPU. Click Duplicate, and then I'll click on that one. I'm going to set it so that it runs, instead of in our normal shared resources, it's going to run on the T4 GPU that we just made that has the TensorFlow image. So I click there and ask it to run there. Now, this big thing popped up because it hasn't finished booting up yet. So we have to wait a little bit longer for it to finish booting up. And let's see, looks like we started it about two minutes ago and it's almost there. Oop, it's there, so it's done. Um, one of the reasons it's actually pretty fast is because for CoCalc, we pre-build an image with all the stuff from uh, Docker Hub already pulled into the image and extracted. And that makes it so that even if it's something like Google Colab or TensorFlow, where the image is maybe 10 to 30 gigabytes, it's still very, very fast to create a VM from it. Plus Google Cloud is extremely fast for um, VM allocation. In any case, let's do it. So I'm gonna clear the output of the entire notebook. And then I'm going to run all the cells again, just like I did before. So let's import TensorFlow. Incidentally, um, let's also run a little snippet of code to confirm that TensorFlow really has access to a GPU. So I wrote that down in another file right here. And it is TF test is GPU available. Let's try that. And it better say um, true, and it does. Um, you can also use other commands like bing nvidia SMI, and this will tell you information about your GPU. Um, and notice it explicitly says that we have a Tesla T4. And it also says that this Python process, this notebook, is running with, um, it's, it's using the GPU. That's what you can see here. All right, now let's go through and uh, load, the, load the data set, create the model, and run the training. And let's see if it's any faster at all than the CPU. Remember, this is not a state-of-the-art GPU. And this model is also kind of a toy model. So it's going through. The first thing it had to do was, uh, let's see, uh, it has to get the data. Uh, whoops. Oop. Um, looks like I may have run things slightly out of order and caused a problem. So I'm just going to restart the kernel because it looks all problematic and clear the outputs. Okay, so we're just starting clean. All right, and instead of like trying to run each one one by one, I'll just do run all cells. So it'll just run them in order. And here it goes. So it's imported TensorFlow. 
Things are not working properly. What is going wrong? Huh. Um, let me just get a quick terminal on this compute server. what the situation is. Hmm. Um, definitely having a little trouble here. Okay, trying again. Now everything seems to be working fine. And grab our data. Where is this compute server? It is in Indonesia. Hmm. All right, I'm just gonna have to cut this part out because this is weird. Oh, there it is. Um, try again to get the data. Okay, now it's making the model. Running the predictions. Defining the model some more. Some more, compiling it. And now finally, doing the training. All right, here it goes. Okay, while this is running, I'm gonna start the third compute server, or the second compute server. So create compute server, and then I'll use an H100 on HyperStack. So this is a really nice, high-quality, high-end uh, GPU. Notice uh, there's information about availability on their cluster. There's an enormous number of these available. Um, the only issue is we have to start with a fairly small Python image and install TensorFlow, but it only takes a minute. So let's start this one running. It takes about five minutes to start up and be completely available. And it's nice to just get that running so that when this is done, we can switch over to using the H100. So this is done. It was a little bit faster, 26.6 seconds versus the, um, let's see, how long did this one take to do the training? This one took 35 seconds. So the T4 is a little faster, but notice there was a little bit of flakiness in the middle. I think that may have something to do with, you know, CoCalc is in one place, the server is in Indonesia. Maybe there was an issue with the network temporarily whatever, I just uh, persisted for a minute, tried again, and now everything is working. Um, and let's just run the rest of the notebook for completeness. I think I spoke too soon, so that didn't run properly at all either. Definitely something going kind of slightly wrong with this. Now it's done. Okay, so uh, we did successfully run all the cells, but it did seem a little weirdly glitchy. Um, okay, I'm going to duplicate this again and call it beginner-h100. Here it is. And I'm gonna set this to run on my NVIDIA H100 GPU, which is starting up. Again, this is going to take um, about three, well, about four to five minutes, and we've only been waiting two minutes. So we should expect it to take another two minutes. Uh, we're done with the T4, so I'm going to uh, delete that spot instance. 
And as we saw, it seems to be a very spotty spot instance. In any case, I can click settings. I don't need any data on it. So I'll just click deprovision and it'll be gone. The file's still here though, because I didn't um, explicitly put the file so that it only runs on the compute server. Okay, I don't need this terminal anymore. Uh, and this is now being removed. Although maybe it's nice to keep the notebook open so we can compare the timings. So we can still like uh, see what the, the training timing was about 26 seconds. And over here, the training time is 35 seconds. And now let's see our H100, it's starting up still. In the meantime, let's do edit, clear output, clear all output. Okay, so we have to wait a little bit more, probably a minute or two. Once it starts up, what we're going to do, and I can actually minimize this and type it in right now, we'll make a new code cell, and we're going to type explanation point, which lets us run a shell command, conda-y, or install-y tensorflow. That will install tensorflow. The dash y is so it doesn't try to ask us whether or not it should do the installation which would be kind of bad because um, the Jupyter Notebook isn't really interactive with the terminal. And that will take about a minute and it will install TensorFlow onto our server. Um, we still have to wait for the server to start up. It looks like it's nearly there. Um, and boom, it's up and running. Okay, excellent. All right, so let's start the installation of TensorFlow. And uh, as that goes, I'm just gonna make a little terminal because it's pretty fun to poke around and see how powerful this H100 server is. So click here, here, and this gives us a terminal on the H100. We could type top, and if, we hit, if you type top and then hit type one, you'll see that it has a lot of CPUs. It also has an enormous amount of memory. You can also type H top and see that it has a lot of Power, you can type NVIDIA SMI, and you could and see that it has an H100 processor. Um, going back here, let's wait for our installation to finish, which will take about a minute. And it's been running since less than a minute ago, so we have to wait a little bit longer. And you can also just kind of scroll down here and see what, see what the progress is like. So it'll just take a little bit of time. And it's done, 61 seconds, and we now have TensorFlow. And now we can just go through and evaluate everything. And it should be very robust and rock solid. So there's a GPU available, yes. Um, it's an H100. Let's load our data set. Here it goes. We have it. Uh, let's create our model with these four uh, layers and here we go, compile the model and now let's train the model. So this is a thing that took 25 to 35 seconds on the CPU and the T4 GPU. So let's see how it does on the state of the art H100. So it's the exact same calculation and it took 12 seconds. So that's way, way, way faster. And it works. And it works. And there we are. Notice, by the way, how um, extremely robust this was. It's a great experience. Super powerful GPU on some rock solid hardware uh, with great, vis vi um, great availability, extremely good price. The only annoying part is it cost, as you can see, $5.62 per hour. So it's kind of expensive. Note on HyperStack, if you click on servers and then um, create compute server, HyperStack, there are a lot of other GPUs which are also extremely robust, great quality. Um, you can see a lot about their parameters listed here uh, and they're less than 562. That's the most high-end one they have available right now. Um, like they're $3, $1.85, etc. cetera. Um, there are also, if we just uh, say select one of these, you can also select an H100 with um, eight of them on the same machine. 
So for about $45 an hour, you can do a training with eight H100s all on the same machine. And that will be very, very fast if you, um, you know, have the right data in place and everything to do such a training. Okay, so we're done. We've tried on plain CoCalc. We tried on a spotty T4 across the world. Um, that was in fact rather spotty. The network connection seemed a little flaky. I'm, it was really kind of broken. It did work in the end, but it wasn't perfect. And then we ran an H100 on HyperStack and that's just been absolutely rock solid. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this demo. Uh, you really, it's not edited. You see exactly what really happened and you see how you can work with multiple compute servers attached to the same project um, all at once in different files. You can fluidly move between them. Uh, you can run terminals, Jupyter Notebooks, and a lot of other stuff. You can click VS Code or JupyterLab and that will pop up running uh, on the compute server, which is really nice. Um, if you like to use JupyterLab instead of CoCalc's user interface, there it is, right there. So there's JupyterLab, it's exactly the same on this compute server, and also VS Code, which has a great Jupyter Notebook interface, and also, of course, incredibly good um, code editing capabilities. Okay, thank you for your time. Um, I hope you play around with, or for serious research purposes, use uh, TensorFlow on CoCalc. Thank you. Bye. And uh, don't hesitate to email us if you have any questions.